Hey everybody, welcome back to another drawing tutorial. So today we have Ushijima from Hayaku. So he's in mid-air, he's like spiking a ball. The, the ball is like up in the left-hand corner here, but give a go at drawing that. And um, yeah, so his face is kind of turned sideways and his arm kind of extends this way and a bit of a hand over here. So, landscape orientation page. Use a pencil for these and hit pause when I go too fast. So, I guess his nose, right? So we're just, his face is, so he's turned kind of sideways, right? And his head is like tilted up, looking at the ball over here in the, in the top right hand corner. <coughs> Excuse me. So, I guess we'll start with his nose. And like, his nose is like an arrow that points towards the ball, okay? So you're just gonna do like a pointing line. Like that, so like a point that goes that way. So that's actually his nose, okay? So, you just want this to be going into the corner, right? So then his his brow will come out here, okay? And then this will turn around his eyebrow on that side and go up towards his hair, okay? So you have a couple of angles there now. Right, so first you have the nose, so you go up, in for the nose, that's pointing that way. And you want to make sure this line is shorter than this line, here. This is the bottom of his nose, this is the bridge of his nose, and the bridge of the nose is always longer than the bottom of the nose. And then this is his eyebrow, and up to his hair. So you'll have, you'll have like a nostril, like just in here, like that. And then... So if this is like his nose, right? So just here, if you feel where your nose, the bridge of your nose is on your own face, it's right beside your eyebrows, right? So that means Ushijima's eyebrow has to be just here because his face is turned sideways. And he's big sort of bushy eyebrows. So this is going to come back like a tick, just going that way. And then the other side, Comes down, gets real thick on this side, and joins that one. And he could have like some hair lines just here and on the edge. So if that's his eyebrow, that means his eye is underneath. So his top eyelid curves up and back this way. Okay. So there. You can thicken it up if you want. I would. It just makes the eye stand out a bit more. Like so. And then his bottom eyelid comes down underneath that. Curving like so. Into here. And you might have like a little section for his tear duct, that little bump that you can feel on the inside of your eye, like so. So again, he's looking up this direction, so his iris won't be in the middle here. It'll just be off to the right, and it'll kind of be a skinny sort of oval sort of circle. Not a perfect circle. You want it to be sort of thinner than a normal circle. So to make it look like his eyeball is turned this way. And then you'll put the pupil just in there. Make it look like he's looking up that way as well. And then he could have an eyelid line just here coming, touching the eyebrow, coming out the other side. Just out there, like that, maybe like a couple of more lines just there, a line coming down his face, like so, and some lines like stress lines or something like underneath his eye, he's super hyper concentrated, so like he's really focused on hitting the ball.
and he could have some like broken lines just for the bridge of his nose coming down here. So his top lip, right? So if this is the bottom of his nose, top lip sticks out a little bit this way. And we're following this line. So everything's going diagonal this way, okay? On the side of the face. <clears throat> so top lip, this comes in for his mouth. And his mouth will continue down like so. It's kind of semi-open. So it kind of comes back up around his lip just here and then the outside of his mouth just there bottom lip sticks out like so and then comes down towards his chin so curving around his bottom lip and then his chin will stick out here and come back into there to his jaw So we just have to add like a kind of a shadow just inside his mouth for the black sort of portion. So it's like just there. No matter how far in you go for the mouth, you're just kind of below this part of his face just here. You know, you don't want to go in too far or have it so small that it's just underneath his nose. And then this is like his tongue. And then a bit of a black shadow just in here. We'll leave a bit of white on top just to show where his teeth are. That kind of thing. And then maybe a line just here for his bottom lip. Okay, so we'll do his fringe, right? So he's got like spike hair spikes. So one here coming down his face, like so. This kind of thing. That's on his forehead. And then these come up to kind of a part in his hair, right? So we go up to there. And then this piece will come down like so. And then we may have some hairlines just in there. And these spikes, we keep going down the side of his head like that like so another one here and then we'll go around his ear so look how far down we are now so we're lower we're just those spikes end just at his top lip see that just here so his ear Curves around like so. Back down. And for his lobe. And then his jaw, just in here. So this is his back, right, here. So we can't really see his, um, the rest of his jaw, because we have a part of his collar of his uniform just going over his jaw, right? So we'll just do in the lines for his ear here, bones and ligaments, that kind of thing. Like so, maybe a bit of a shadow in here. Right there, them over there. And then, like I said, you can't really see his jaw, right? So we just have a curved line for the top of his uniform, just there. And then a bump for a fold for his clothing, just there. Okay, do, do, do. so you can thicken up some lines if you want, like on the edge of his face. Um, some of them appear to be thicker in the picture I'm drawn from, but um, you know, it's totally up to you. Anyone who knows like the anime Demon Slayer, it's kind of a similar thing going on. Not in the actual haiku anime, but just in this picture for some reason. Looks pretty cool. He has some kind of action lines on his face, like stuff this going down like that I think it's just to show some kind of energy 
you know, that he's kind of flying through the air. The wind is going this way. And he has a shadow underneath his earlobe, just here. And, right, so the rest of that collar goes back a bit further, just to there, just in line with his ear there, see that? Stop at about there. And then his neck comes out like so, just here. And this is the bottom of his hairline. So like just across here, just kind of a scraggly sort of line, just there. Now the rest of his hair is gonna come all the way down around back to there, right? So, what's the easiest? So we'll go a spike like this, right? And then we have a hair spike sticking out here on top. Another one there. And then the back of his head will come down here, going back around. And we will eventually meet a spike that sticks out just there. Curves back in. So the back of his head is like here. Well, the back of his hair, his back of his skull is probably about here. But his hair goes out a bit further. So probably, so we're going to go like, spike out like so. Back in, back down to there, back to here. And then we're going to like add some spikes coming down all the way down to this part of his hair, right? So. This kind of thing, okay? Some of them are smaller than others. Some might have single strands, you know. But eventually, they're just gonna come into his neck here. Some hair spikes, like so. You know, there might be some texture lines coming up if you want but not 100% necessary. So the main thing about him is he's got a part in his hair in the middle here. So this is gonna go just like curving out from here, right? So just these sort of lines. And then on the other side, going out, say the other way. So you could, you could draw that with a, just like a line if you wanted, but it's kind of a bit more realistic to do like sort of strands of hair coming down his head. Like that kind of thing. And you can add as much of that texture as you want. Coming down his head. Okay, so his back, right? Yushijima's big back, big shoulders. So, we'll do this shoulder first. So it kind of comes out right across his chin here, nearly touching his chin. Comes up, down, like so. It's his shoulder. And we have some bump lines for clothing. So bump here. Another bump. And then we come across like so. And then this curves around like so for his sleeve, okay? And then it kind of curves again. And then comes up to the bottom of his arm. And then it'll go back this way. Like 
that and you could have a fold line here fold line here sort of a line for the seam you know the sort of stitching that runs down like that and then like a couple of extra fold lines so you're you're following the tension that the figure is under so like, like it runs back towards his body that way might be some action lines again like what's on his face and then the front of his body is going to come down like so, like that. So we might as well do the rest of his arm while we're here. So we have the start of his forearm, just like so. This kind of curves around here, might be a shadow inside. So if that's his forearm and like maybe a bit of his, the side of his tricep or bicep, That means the other side comes out here. And he's a muscly kind of guy, so fairly defined muscles. And there might be shadow down here as well. So then his forearm will come out here curve around and start to dip down towards his wrist. So on your forearm, you always have that bump just there, see? So where we drew at the top of his arm, we drew this dip and then a bump coming out here. Okay, and then we'll do the other side. So we have his tricep, right? And then we do the other bump. Like that. So you always want to think in terms of muscles on arms, a lot of these bumps. And you can thicken up the edge of the lines just to make them stand out a bit. And then we might have some muscle lines, so like elbow and stuff, lines like that. Maybe a line here, there. Like a tricep sort of line coming out here. forearm line going that way and again you can thicken up these lines as much as you want okay so We'll go back over here now and we'll do the other shoulder and the rest of his body and then his other hand. So we're gonna bump like so. And then we're gonna bump this way. And then we have a shoulder line that's gonna go like this. It's a quite curvy sort of line there. And then it'll come down to another bump, like that. These are all folds for his, for his sleeve. And then this will wrap around here. Like that. And then it'll go into his armpit. There. And then it'll come down his back. Down to there. And you could have a fold line just there. Then you see that line for his shoulder area, his shoulder girdle is the word for it really. So fold lines, just there, fold lines here, following the shape for his back, going down towards his armpit, mostly going down this way, because the tension, the arm is pulling the t-shirt this way, but his body is pulling it the other way. So that's the direction of the tension, okay? And then we have a line here, and then a full line like here. And then there's the black line that separates the pink from the white parts of his uniform. So it's like a quite a thick line here. And he's got another line underneath his collar, just there. And then 
that line for the other side. So I'll just thicken that up a bit. So there's a full line here, and then there's like a line like this that separates the pink and the white on the other side. Okay. Comes down like so. Meets a fold line. Right, so when you meet a fold line, you gotta bump over it, right? Because the line doesn't go straight, and then it comes down that way. Okay, so it gets to here, goes a bit wavy. And we have another fold line going up into his armpit here. And we'll just thicken up this. And let's see, any more? So we need some maybe just some more like action lines, just bringing things like back. Just some like hatching like this, like just to show, I guess the direction of his motion. There's lots of it in this picture, so I might as well add it. So, and maybe like some stuff here. Thicken up some of these edge lines. Hatching lines there, armpit line there. And yeah, like some sort of motion lines that way as well. So here, a full line right down the middle of his back. Just there curb line like that. Shoulder line might go a bit further. This whole line that way. Okay, we can see the, just the number one just down here, but it's like a box number one. Like a capital or like a big, you can just see the top of it just there on his uniform. And then I think he has his, his name, is it his name, but it's in like Japanese writing. So kind of complicated but I'll, I'll do as best I can so I'll write it in single sort of lines first and then I'll thicken them up so we go diagonal diagonal that way diagonal down cross like that and then we have like a comma thing here so that's the general shape but then you got to like make it look like Japanese calligraphy right so you just have to like Thicken each one up, right, like like that amount of thickness, and then same over here, and on all the others, and then there's I think there's three more letters or three more characters. Could say strength, maybe it doesn't say Ushijima, but so that kind of thing. That's the first one, and then there's three more. This next one is pretty complicated, so goes down like so goes across and bring it back down to there comes out down kind of like an s and up to there and then it has another line coming out here with an end like a triangular end that one is actually that thickness so this thicken this up top one and then there's like raindrops or something I finished the manga by the way epic <laughs> it's so good I won't give away any spoilers but it's definitely my favorite sports anime and manga the manga is just as good you should read it if you haven't so here we have a few more raindrops this way and then like a tick like a Nike tick but it's like thicker or shorter and then pretty much like a letter R like an English letter R so like it goes down like so out, down, in, like that. okay and then you just thicken that up like so and then we'll do his hand right so he's like hand ready to smack the ball so 
comes out of his t-shirt so his his like tricep comes out like so out there okay bicep then comes out like so like that comes to his elbow just off my page if you have more room you could fit that and then a line like so again some action lines just going down his arm like that hatching sort of thing and then his wrist so we come up like so for his wrist and then this line comes back it's like a letter T just there it's where his forearm meets his wrist and then his thumb comes out like this like another T <laughs> and then curves around his thumb knuckle up to there the other side of his wrist will just be on this side so that's his wrist bone just here comes down to an elbow just off my page down here and then we have his joint of his wrist just there and then his hand will come up to a knuckle up here okay so that's the overall shape you want it to get wider than his wrist up here now we'll start and add the fingers. Hands are tough, guys, so hip pause, take your time. So, so we have one knuckle, right, just here. So the next knuckle touches it, comes up, comes down. Like that. So we can't really see these fingers, right? We can just see the knuckles. We can see the next two fingers and thumb. So, right, so we'll just go Let's curve in there first. Bring it up around his finger. Down like so. And then bring it back in. Bumping as you go a little bit because you know fingers tend to be bumpy sort of things. So we can have like some bumps and stuff on them. Let's curve it around like that. And then the other side of the finger will come to a knuckle sort of there. And then come down like that. And then it'll meet a bit of a knuckle line. Like this knuckle. Just here. That, and then you might have knuckle lines and stuff like that and lines and a nail so you need a nail up here curve a line that way in that way back around the top that's what you're going for we might see the tip of that other finger just coming out from behind this finger just here just a little bit that kind of thing Now, the next finger, index finger, right? Starts there. Do, 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 comes down, comes up. Down, up. So it's a bit curved up this way. And then goes around the top. down like so fingernail up here knuckle lines knuckle, knuckle, knuckle. maybe a skin line there and another knuckle line just for that and then some lines hand lines underneath it Maybe line coming down here for the back of his hand bones right so and just his thumb then so comes down like so and then his thumb so bump bump so this is a tricky hand position now to get right so
Take your time. You pause a lot. Go around the top of the thumb, back in this way, and then kind of bumps out for his thumb knuckle just there. And then there'll be some knuckle lines and a thumbnail just there. There's like debris in the air. So like just these dots sort of. Okay, so we're gonna add the volleyball, right? So if you had some some sort of circle that could fit in up here, it's probably about the size of his head, right? So we're right up, I'm gonna fit it just right into the corner as tightly as I can. So like right up here, so just like a circle, right? So you could trace around something like a ball or a plate. So, and the ball is like spinning and stuff. So don't worry if you don't get it perfectly circular. So you want it to be like that size, I'd say. You could go bigger if you wanted, but just to fit it in, I'm gonna put it there. I'm going to thicken up the edge lines and I'm going to even put some like motion lines coming off it. Okay. So, and the, so the edge can be like real rough, sketchy. I'll move down my page. I don't think you can see it in the picture, can you? Yeah, like there. That's better. So, something like that. Right, so then the volleyball lines inside. So we do a diagonal line there, and then a cross line coming that way. So that's how you started, right? So this is like the intersections of all those yellow and blue sort of segments. And then, so this will curve this way first, and then we curve it that way. So we have a blue section. And then up here at this cross that we did, we do a yellow section curving down like so. Like that. And then we do another section there. And then another one curving up that way. And then this will come down to here. And then bring this out like so. And again, there'll be all sort of lines of action and, you know, sort of spinning. Can do as much of this as you want. So we're trying to make it look as dynamic as I can. Of course you could just draw like a normal ball if you wanted. You don't have to of course do any of these lines that I'm doing. Just thought it would it's the way it is in the picture so I thought it would look kind of cool. So. Okay, I think I'll have to stop it there because we're running out of time. So, there you go. Ushijima from Hayoku, Midair Spike. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.